An undercover officer found murdered in a parking lot. Was this a hit? If so, the question is, why? Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Officer Lester Garnier. Viewer discretion is advised. On the evening of July 10th, 1988, 30-year-old Lester Garnier would have dinner with his parents at their home in Concord, California. It was a wonderful dinner. Lester was in good spirits. But then, according to his parents, he at one point kind of suddenly rushed out of the house. Didn't really say why or where he was going. Shortly before 11.30 p.m., Lester's car, a 1984 Corvette, was seen parked in a parking lot, kind of all on its own. Several hours later, in the early morning hours of July 11th, 1988, a groundskeeper for this parking lot was doing some work when he saw the same Corvette, and it looked like the driver of the Corvette was asleep in the car. He was kind of lunged over on the side. But when he got closer, he noticed that there was blood on this man's head. And it was more than evident that the driver of this car was dead. The parking lot where this man was found dead was in Walnut Creek, California. The occupant of the car was 30-year-old Lester Garnier. Lester Garnier was an undercover vice cop for the San Francisco Police Department. Lester was highly regarded as a really good officer who did a really fantastic job. It's believed that because Lester was such a good-looking young man, he was able to do this undercover work because he, he really seemed to uh, do a lot of work with apprehending prostitutes. And so he was able to kind of easily get these women because of his looks. Lester Garnier was also very much a dedicated son. He really, really took care of his parents. Outside of that, and also he had a sister that the, they were very close as well. Lester was a ladies' man outside of work. Uh, he had dated several women. Lester was just well-liked, and he was seemingly well-respected. How did it end up this? With two gunshot wounds to his head inside of his own vehicle. The only evidence that police were able to really find in the car were fingerprints that were not Lester's. However, when they first submitted those fingerprints initially after the crime, they didn't match anyone. Police would question several of the prostitutes that Lester had worked with or had apprehended. And even with them, he seemed to be well-liked and they spoke very highly of him. They didn't find any evidence that any of these prostitutes that he may have, you know, eventually led to their arrest. They couldn't find any evidence that they were directly connected to his murder. He was, at the time, investigating a local brothel that he had done some undercover work in. And this brothel was being visited by other police officers, and some high-ranking officials. So there became some turmoil within two different police departments. You had the San Francisco Police Department and I think Concord Police, who were both investigating this crime. But you had one police department at one point almost pointing the blame at the other police department, like, hey, was he investigating some, under some officers who were doing some dirty deeds? They found out and they had him killed, it's possible. There was also a, a candidate running for mayor at the time. His name was Roger Boaz, and I think he was rumored to be one of the high-ranking officials who had attended this brothel. And so there was this speculation, maybe he had Lester killed by someone. However, Roger Boaz would end up being arrested anyway uh, because he had been caught having sex with underage prostitutes, which he would end up pleading guilty to those charges in 1988. So police discovered that Lester had been at his parents' house the night prior. They found out he did leave the house sort of rushed and unexpectedly. They didn't really know why he left his parents. Um, and they said he had gotten about two phone calls that night and they didn't know who the phone calls came from, but they, the parents were led to believe that that's the reason he left the house so suddenly. I can't tell if 
they've looked into the phone records to know if they could find out who called him. It, I don't see any mention of it. Now, Lester was also supposed to go see a movie with his friends that night, but they get a phone call from Lester from his car because he had a car phone, one of those fancy car phones back in the day. And he told his friends, hey, I can't make it to the movie anymore. And the only reason he gave them was it's just, it's just too late, even though they already had plans ahead of time and he knew what time it would have been. Then, according to witnesses who were in the parking lot at that time, they saw, this is when they got the information that Lester's Corvette was in the parking lot at 11.30 p.m. There was one man who was, I guess, a carpenter who was doing some late night work in a office or a building there in that parking lot. He says that at one point he heard the sounds of firecrackers. He assumed they were firecrackers because 4th of July was just the week prior and so he didn't really think much of it. Then he goes into his building to do some work and he comes back out like a few moments later, a few minutes later, and he sees two women, and the images I'm showing are recreations from Unsolved Mysteries, but he sees two women dressed up relatively nicely uh, and they were walking down the parking lot and then he saw the women stop for a moment and say something and then they each got into a different vehicle and drove away. Another witness would come forward to police who had been in the parking lot that night and the guy was driving by when he saw a blonde woman getting out of the passenger side of the Corvette and then the driver, this person, saw the blonde woman walk around to the other side of the Corvette and looked into the driver's side for like just a moment, then she gets up and then she begins to walk away. This guy is able to give a pretty, not super detailed, but detailed enough description of this woman. And they come up with a composite drawing of her. They also do a composite drawing because he saw her walking away of her backside. And so to kind of give like her figure and sort of like the clothing she was wearing, they show these composites to the other witness who saw the two women and he said, that does look a lot like one of the blonde women I saw walking in the parking lot that night. Police would put out a $250,000 reward for any information that helps lead to the capture of Lester Garnier's killer. However, they had no luck. They don't know, again, if this was police. I mean, essentially they believe that this was a hit job, that this was a targeted attack on Lester. This wasn't like a random chance occurrence killing because it doesn't appear that he had been robbed. There was no evidence that he had had any kind of intercourse that particular evening in the car or anything like that. And so there really wasn't a, a truly established motive. And so it kind of just appeared because of all of his undercover work, he had arrested prostitutes in the past. He had been involved in a potential big bust of police officers and high-ranking officials being caught doing not so nice things, illegal things. And so there's all these theories that he was killed because he knew too much about a certain operation or he was killed because he had too many prostitutes arrested and maybe the the prostitutes in the area band together and had them killed, which would explain why there was two women. It, but the thing is, is it's really, it's just not known. They don't know why he was killed. They know, they have a pretty damn good feeling this was a planned attack and they this was organized and they put out a hit on them. They just don't know by who and for what reason. This case would go unsolved for decades. And then in 2008, the fingerprint was run through the system. Now that it's all digitalized and it's more uh, computerized, they ran the fingerprints through their system and it actually came up with a hit. So the fingerprints found inside Lester's car matched a woman named Catherine Kuntz. When they found this information out, they discovered that Catherine was a prostitute in the Concord Walnut Creek area of California in the exact time that Lester was killed. In 1991, she was arrested for conspiracy to commit murder. She had allegedly hired two men to kill her husband. They failed, they did not kill the husband, but I guess they didn't have enough evidence to go forward with a prosecution in terms of, so they, they basically dropped the charges against her, the conspiracy charges. 
She would end up pleading guilty to assault charges, however. By June of 2008, she is released from prison. At that point, she, this, hap this all happened in Florida. Of course, it's Florida. Uh, so she was released, and when she was released, they, that's when they, at that same time frame, they found out that the fingerprints matched hers. Police had gone to question her a couple of times, and all they've really said is that they don't have enough evidence to suggest she is the killer. However, she is their prime suspect. They said, based on their interviews, she provided enough information to suggest that she was there at the murder scene when the murder occurred. But they don't have enough evidence to actually charge her with it, despite having the fingerprint in the car. It does sound like they suspect that there was definitely at least one other person involved, likely another woman, based on the eyewitness testimonies. And so I, they might think that that person was the actual shooter and Catherine was just sort of there as the accomplice. Maybe she was used to lure Lester into this scenario. Catherine Kuntz was actually originally from Scotland. So when she was released from prison in Florida in 2008, and after she was questioned by police from California, she was actually deported back to Scotland. And that is where she resides now. Lester Garnier's mom passed away in 1996 and his dad passed away in 2002. Both of them died never even knowing that there was a match with a fingerprint. So none of them ever even knew that there was a suspect officially. And they never really knew and still don't. And no, no one still knows why Lester was killed. And, and truly who it was who actually fired the gun. This did happen in 1988, and it, so it was a long time ago, but there is still plenty of time for justice to be served. The killer or killers are likely still alive and out there in the world. Maybe they have said something, and maybe that person they've said something to is you. So if you have any information about the murder of Officer Lester Garnier, you are please advised to contact the police. If you have information, please call 925-943-5844. Any information, even the smallest, tiniest bit can help break this case wide open and Lester and his remaining family can get justice. So please come forward if you have anything, because it is time for Lester Garnier and his family to finally get the justice he rightfully deserves. But that is it for this case, true crime, Aruni Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, please subscribe, give this video a like, hit the bell, follow me over on my two TikTok pages if you want to. The links to those are gonna pop up here at some point in the beginning at the end of the video, and also in the link tree in the description of this video below. You will also find my merch store link down there. We ship all over the world if you wanted to check it out. And then lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a super quick email. My email is listed below. And just email me the name of the individual or the case, where it happened and when it happened. I'll add it to the list. I pick my cases at random, so I will get to that case eventually. I just can't tell you when, but it will happen. But at any rate, that is it for this video. Sorry to be solemn again, but uh, as I said in my previous video, I am in excruciating pain and I can only sit for so long before I want to die. So I'm going to wrap this up and I will see you for the next video tomorrow. Okay. Sayonara, suckers. I'm sorry for calling you suckers. That was definitely rude. I apologize. Do I, though? Do I?